So through my, uh, my years of doing research on the topic of ascension, I've collected a, a, a large, uh, a, just amassed a huge collection of, of imagery that, that supports our ascension, that gives us visual guidance, that gives us cues and clues. These master artists were many of them masters themselves, masters of the craft, of, of the work, of the great work of, of our transformation. And they encoded these secrets within their paintings. And perhaps one of the, the the top painters of, of all esoteric paintings of all time would have to be Hieronymus Bosch. And in this painting here, which is part of a, a diptych, he shows us this ascension of this figure that begins down at the left and clearly shows us that as we rise into the higher frequency realms, he assures us there's a gate, there's a tunnel, the proverbial tunnel of light that the near-death experiencers have described seeing in their near-death experiences. And so, Hieronymus Bosch has provided us a real key element here, a visual that says there's a pathway through, that if we keep moving forward, moving up, always reaching highward and onward, that we are going to be gaining assistance. And so at the very bottom of the painting, we see the soul as it's rising, is clothed. It's got assistance here in the form of two angels that have come to assist it in its ascension. And as it rises, it loses its clothes. This means it's now converted from its earthly flesh, its flesh and blood body, physical body, into its non-physical or non-material light body, and it continues to rise. The angels continuing to assist, but at some point they sort of are backing off here, and then the, the ascending soul finds the tunnel of light, the wormhole, the stargate, the portal that leads to the land of the living. The, the white land, the pure land, the kingdom of heaven, or whatever term you choose to use for that higher dimensional place. This is uh, quite similar to what we see in this Tibetan image, a another uh, favorite of mine. It's called the Nine Deepening Stages of Calm Abiding. If you were in a Tibetan monastery any time in the past thousand years, they would, they would have this hanging on the refrigerator door in the microwave oven because it is a visual meditation tool that guides the, the initiate guides the ascender on its pathway up to the celestial realms. At the, uh, in the process of perfecting calm abiding, we start with cultivating virtuous actions in the Tibetan tradition. And we diligently stutter, excuse me, we diligently study and ponder the Dharma, the way, the, the teaching. And so more keys come here that we want to practice virtuous actions, which is the same as righteous actions, which we talked about yesterday. And we want to become students, studiers. And I know that everyone that is gathered here today is a student of the ascension process. That's ultimately the great work that we are all involved in together. At the end of the path, a single pointed concentration is attained. And the purified elephant of the mind, which is what we see at the very top, is now completely settled. And I just love the visual of, 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 this, of this tanka because what we see here is clearly the pathway, the stairway to heaven, if you will, with the rainbow bridge being the reward for the concentrated mind, as well as the virtuous mind as well. What we see is a, a gray elephant. This is each of us individually and all of us collectively who starts out on his journey. And as he's ascending this pathway or stairway to heaven, if you will, he encounters various trials and tribulations. These are all designed to help to purify and perfect the soul, which is why the elephant is beginning to turn pink as it overcomes these various challenges. And it continues on its journey until it turns completely pink, leaving behind everything that's gray. The rainbow bridge opens, and then we see two pink elephants with uh, riders upon them that are coming and going on the stairway to heaven. Beyond the, the rainbow bridge, we see the pure land. That could be uh, Padmasambhava in his, uh, in Copper Mountain, his, his dwelling in the pure land. And the, the point is, is that once we attain this level of consciousness, this level of calm abiding and, and pure consciousness, then the rainbow bridge opens and we're able to manifest that light body and have the ability then to phase back and forth between the material and the immaterial realms to be agents of our source, our creator, messengers of love, peace, and compassion. So it, it opens up this concept that, hey, we're all somewhere on this path. And I like to say, to, to be highly complimentary, um, that 
all of us are, I would say, if you're at this moment with me on this Sunday afternoon or this afternoon watching this, this presentation, that chances are you're somewhere up near the top of this ascending stairway. You're mostly pink. You've purified a whole lot of all the stuff that needs to be purified, and you're ready to go fully pink. So I like to say that in my audiences, I, I look out and I see a lot of pink elephants sitting in the audience. And I hope that includes you, that you are on that, in that place where you are probably this close to being able to complete your ascension. And the words of the Dalai Lama also give us comfort here that on this path of ascension, we've all been working on it lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And our ultimate perfection, the great perfection, the rainbow light body, can be achieved in one lifetime. And the hope and promise is, is that that lifetime is this lifetime. This is your time to take those last steps of purifying your soul, becoming the ultimate virtual, virtuous soul, and manifesting your light body. So for thousands of years, Tibetan Buddhist meditators have used this painting to guide them through the nine essential stages of meditation or concentration in order to acquire the true comprehension through a state of insight. Reproductions of this image can be found in temples, monasteries, teaching centers all over the world. And based on instructions originally given by the Buddha Maitreya, this painting faithfully represents the essential steps towards establishing a truly effective practice of meditation. So perhaps you'll take a, uh, excuse me, perhaps you'll take a, a screenshot of the image, put it on your cell phone, um, put it on your computer desktop, print it out as a, as a reminder of the path that you've been on all these lifetimes after lifetimes after lifetimes and the importance of every single action and decision and word in this lifetime because one of those actions words and and uh and thoughts that you're having are going to be the one that can tip you over into being that pure elephant and having that rainbow bridge open up to you in my work, I, I like to compare the Tibetan image on the left with this Christian last judgment image that uh, started to emerge in the 16th century, particularly in Russia. And you can see that we, we have a, a serpent that is snaking its way up through several tiers going up to the throne of Christ. As David Goldfrank, who's a, a, an academic at the University of Maryland says, the, the snake suddenly appeared in late medieval meaning uh, 15th century, Ukrainian and Russian last judgment or second coming iconography. It usually, the serpent usually has 20 or more rings representing what Goldfrank called stellar toll booths through which the soul must pass after death in its ascension. And if you look at the, at the painting, you can see the serpent as it winds its way up, it's got red rings on it. Those are the stellar toll booths as Goldfrank describes them. I, I, I like the term stellar toll booth. I think that's an awesome term, but I've got a better one for him. How about Stargate? How about portals? How about this is the, the soul's journey from the material earth plane up to the throne of Christ, which is the object in the, in the Christian tradition, certainly, of all of our ascension efforts is to go through these various stargates, which could actually be star systems, that the soul goes through in its cleansing and purification process until it gets up to the higher dimensional or higher frequency levels, which is what the layer cake in this painting represents. The, the serpent winds its way from the earth plane, the material plane, up to the highest frequency we can conceive, which is the throne of Christ. And, and as Goldfrank says, these 19 or 21 toll booths or stargates also represent the, the torments the human soul must go through in order to return to the kingdom of heaven. And again, in my view, this umbilical cord is actually a stargate, and all of these torments and the soul challenges that we encounter in the, on the earth plane are ultimately designed to assist us in man making our ascension body, teaching us how to harmonize the energies on the earth plane. If, if we can't harmonize the energies of worry, fear, stress, anxiety, doubt, and disbelief on the earth plane and manifest those thoughts as we do in a much slower fashion, we're going to have real problems when we get into a higher frequency domain or when the frequency of the earth rises so that more and more our thoughts become instantly real. 
So all of these experiences that we have, the trials and tribulations, the challenges that we experience with, with friends, with loved ones, coworkers, whoever, the world at large, are ultimately serving the purpose of assisting us in having the right thought, right action, right view, and transmuting any of the negative, negative or lower frequencies of anger, jealousy, doubt, those sorts of things, into the higher frequencies of love and confidence and higher manifestation. So in the detail here, we see our serpent winding its way up. It goes through some sort of a device that's guarded by angels. And then ultimately, the head of the serpent winds up at the throne of Christ. So reading this, we can say, okay, the, the stargate started on earth. The wormhole opened. The soul goes through it, journeys through 21 uh, travails of the soul on the earth plane, and when it leaves, then it goes through 21 stargates, cosmic toll booths, star systems, until it reaches the higher frequency domain of the throne of Christ. And just beyond that throne is yet another domain where we see God the Father, and that represents the ultimate destination of the soul. So just a few examples to get us going here in terms of talking about ancient concepts of the ascension path and the, and the way of the ascending soul. Talking in more detail about that, I want to bring in a few thoughts from an article I recently posted called The Awakened Soul's Heroic Ascension Journey. I had actually written this a number of years ago for an episode of my Gaia program, The Awakened Soul, but I decided to update it and revise it a little bit in the context of our current challenge uh, with the coronavirus. And I th think that it's a very helpful concept to review at this time as we look for tools and, and ways that we can navigate or better navigate through our scenario. And once again, we see the rising soul. This is a painting by Giotto. Uh, the soul is rising. And as it's rising, an angel is coming out of a, a rip in the fabric of space-time to offer it its crown. And as I said yesterday, that is our, our, the, the main opportunity of our coronavirus crisis or the Chinese virus crisis is that we all have to begin to embrace our crown. That is our highest potential selves because the only way we're going to be able to navigate what is to come is to up-level our awareness, up-level our, our consciousness, bring in some new tools that represent the tools of our ascended self. And we'll bring that into more focus as, as we continue. The hero's journey that I'm going to be discussing is an ascension journey. At its core, the, the hero's journey maps the progression of a person from a normal world to a higher ascended state of consciousness through a series of trials and tribulations. Stories of Buddha, Moses, Christ, all fit neatly into this framework. And of course, it was the great mythologist Joseph Campbell who first determined the, the importance of this hero's journey. In his book, A Hero with a Thousand Faces, he had done extensive research on many of the hero's journeys throughout uh, many times in different cultures and found that they all follow a very similar 12-step process, a 12-step a path and that this becomes the, uh, a framework for all the great uh, stories that have ever been told. But more importantly, in my view, it's a framework also for our ascension. It helps us to navigate our ascension process. It tells us where we're at at any given time and what we can expect as the next steps in that process. The journey, like our ascension, our quest for wholeness, holiness, and completion, is often represented as a circle because it's actually a cycle. It's a never-ending cycle, this 12-step process that we're going to be describing. And as I say, the hero's journey is a powerful tool that can help us understand our soul's incarnation and our cosmic travels. And even more, during a time of crisis, it provides, as I say, that navigational tool it will motivate us as well to take the extraordinary actions that we're now called upon to take to ensure the victory before us. To, to illustrate this, I'm, I'm bringing in William Blake's incredible painting of the stairway to heaven. In the story that's illustrated here, Jacob of the Old Testament uh, book of Genesis has fallen asleep on a stone and he falls into a dream. And in the dream, he sees a ladder or stairway to heaven 
with angels ascending and descending upon that stairway. Jacob ascends the stairway, goes up to the highest possible place he can get to, the throne of El, sees El, the shining one, the Elohim, the shining God of the Old Testament, wakes up in terror and says, awesome, terrible is this place. This is none other than the gate to God, and this is the gate to heaven. And he marks that spot by placing a pillar there and anoints the pillar with oil. It happens that the name of the place where Jacob was asleep and dreaming was called Luz, which means light. And in the esoteric sense, we can perhaps identify Luz, the place of light, as a, a place in, in the promised land or ancient Palestine, or we can also equally effectively, and perhaps more effectively actually, locate it in our own mystic anatomy, in which case the stone that Jacob has laid his head on is the philosopher's stone. And the philosopher's stone is, of course, the pineal gland, the seat of the soul, the manufacturing gland that looks like a pine cone that has crystals that are embedded all over the top of it and actually is a manufacturing plant of sacred oils, oils that contain the secretions, that contain the secrets that can transmute us into beings of light. And that is the highest esoteric interpretation of Jacob's experience. So here's Jacob asleep on the stone, awakening the pineal gland. He ascends the stairway, and now that his third eye is wide open and no longer blind, he can see all these higher dimensional beings, the angels that are coming and going, that are there always to assist each and every one of us on our ascension, if we can just call on them, if we can open our spiritual eyes to, the, to the, their existence, and begin to expand our frequencies to enter into their realm, they are there waiting for us, and their goal is to assist us on our ascension. It's very clever that uh, William Blake shows these angels, and indeed Jacob, going through the sun. He's riffing here on ancient Egyptian stargate metaphysics that our sun is a sun tunnel, a star tunnel, a portal. The way to heaven is literally through the sun, the S-U-N. So we can put a stargate ring around the sun and we get the, the ancient concept right before our very eyes that our sun is a portal to other realms. As I said, Joseph Campbell broke down the monomyth, the hero's journey, into 12 steps. He does, as a matter of fact, describe 17 stages. However, the popularized version of the hero's journey usually has 12. So I'm going to be working with 12 today. Generally speaking, these journeys are divided into three acts, a departure, an initiation, and a return. We can think of that in terms of our life, that, that we originally departed our original homeland, our source place, the kingdom of heaven, the pure land. We came to earth for a period of initiation, and then we will ultimately return to that higher, finer place that we emerged from, or perhaps even go to another place altogether. We've all experienced a birth. We will all experience a life, which is what we're experiencing now, and we will all experience a death, a rebirth, a resurrection, and an ascension. And what our belief system is, is that we can guide our ascension. We can choose our path of ascension. We can prepare for our ascension while we are living, as opposed to waiting for our time of death when hopefully, if we get lucky, someone's going to be there to assist us. So the hero's journey begins with the hero in the ordinary world, the comfort zone. If we think of the circular hero's journey as a clock, this is 12 o'clock. So at 12 o'clock, our hero is home, he's restless, maybe wishing for a higher calling. Something is missing in his or her life. But what? Usually she's oblivious to what is to come. In our present scenario, this is January, February 2020. We're all living our ordinary world, the normal world that people think we're going back to, but we never will go back to because we can't. So we're, we're in January and February. It's pre-coronavirus lockdown, self-imprisonment, whatever term we want to use for this present scenario. And we're going along just fine. And then suddenly at one o'clock, something happens. 
our journey begins. When we receive a call to action, such as a threat to our safety, we're watching the news and all of a sudden the news says, uh, folks, uh, it's time for you to head home. And instead of heading home, everybody stopped at the grocery store along the way and cleaned out the grocery stores. And we're getting ready in almost a total panic now for, for what is to come because it's unknown what is, what is before us. But whatever it is, this threat to our safety, will, it thre threatens our family. It threatens our way of life, just like our present predicament. We're all waking up to the fact that we're just now beginning to apprehend exactly what we are dealing with in this scenario. Whatever the call is in the hero's journey, it shakes up the ordinary world of the hero and presents a challenge, a challenge that must be overcome. A quest must be taken. A journey must be undertaken in order to overcome this challenge. In Campbell's research, he noted that often the hero refuses to accept the quest. And that's you know, a lot of people are, are that way. I mean, I live here in Nashville, and you can't believe the traffic you hear sometimes. You know, we're told to, to lock down and, 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 and stay inside. A lot of people just kind of ran right through that, that, that suggestion. They refuse to accept the quest because the rest of us have kind of intuited that, hey, this is a, this is a break. This is a necessary break. We've chosen to go within. We've chosen to revisit maybe old projects to get things organized. Organization equals power. So a lot of people have spent time getting their homes organized, their businesses organized in, in anticipation that things will once again open up again. Um, some of us have had fears and doubts. That's perfectly normal in this situation because we prefer the normal world. We wanna know when do we get back to normal? We don't get, ever get back to normal. We don't, normal was not good anyway, right? We want better than normal, that, that is our goal. We're not talking about rebuilding an old world, we're now anticipating creating a new world, a new world based on love, light, and righteousness rather than the old world based on control and greed and authoritarianism. So some of us have answered this call. That's why you're here. You, you've answered especially the big picture call of ascension. For others, you know, this seems too big. I, they, they're like, I don't have time for that ascension stuff. And you know, this lockdown and coronavirus, it doesn't really apply to me anyway. So they, they refuse the call. But the rest of us, we've answered that call. And we're well on down our path now, and we're recognizing that there's something very profound waiting for us at the end of this challenge. Two o'clock. At this stage, the hero needs assistance. So that's us. Once again, we, we've, we've followed all the, the, the directions, and now we're saying, okay, we need more information. We need more help in this scenario to kind of navigate through and figure out exactly what's going on. Our hero is seeking courage and motivation, She's seeking something. And that something is provided by the mentor figure who gives it to her. Often this is a book or it's a piece of advice or information. The figure can be a friend, it can be a family member, a colleague or a stranger, it can be a blog, it can be a webinar. At this moment, I can be your mentor. I am, I'm providing some advice and some inspiration that you're going to take into your, your own consciousness and decide what works for you, what doesn't work for you. But either way, the mentor is a figure that is talking to your angelic higher self. And that is the ultimate goal here is to listen to that voice, to get to know that voice of your angelic higher self. That's the part of you that can see the future, can see the past too. It knows what's coming. And if you listen to it, it can guide you effectively. And part of, as a mentor, I'm trying to inspire you to, to tap into that voice, to know that voice. And we'll talk about this more a little bit later. But I'm sure all of you can relate to an experience where maybe you're driving down the road and you're thinking about turning left at the, at the stop sign and the, that little voice says, no, let's turn right. And sure enough, there's some kind of a mishap if you would turn left that you avoid it because you listen to your angelic, your higher self. And that, that is a very key aspect of our awakening. In fact, I think it's about nine-tenths of it is learning to listen to that higher self. At three o'clock, the hero is now ready to take the next step and act upon her call to adventure. This is known as crossing the threshold. She leaves the known world and enters the unknown country 
the far away land. And in, the, in a sense, that's, that's where we're all right now. We have, we have crossed the threshold on this global crisis that we're experiencing, and now we're venturing together into the unknown land. We've decided that we're not going to accept the status quo of this event. We're going to move forward. In fact, we're going to focus on our ascension during this time because we know that if we can link more closely with our higher self, that part of ourself that wants us to attain our highest frequency of love, light, and righteousness, that our life is going to be protected and that we're going to be able to find our way back to or up to that, that higher frequency place that we're seeking. This is the moment when our soul leaves its cosmic home. Call it heaven, the pure land, or the other world. The soul is originally composed of light. When it crosses the border or threshold, it leaves behind the known world and enters the unknown world of the flesh. So this is the birth canal in our original birth. And as I said yesterday, in our coronavirus crisis, our Chinese virus crisis, this is the crowning. This is when now we emerge from that birth canal of this event, and we are now crowned. We're seeking our sovereignty. We're seeking the, the reward that is here in this scenario for us, as well as all of the rest of humanity. Our problem or challenge once we enter into the earth plane as a light soul is that we're two-thirds divine and one-third human. I derive this from the second oldest human story, Epic of Gilgamesh, which is a Sumerian story from about 2300 BC, told about a Sumerian king named Gilgamesh, who's on an ascension quest, just like us. And along his pathway, his mentor, the goddess Inanna, manifests to him and tells him, hey, Gilgamesh, um, before you try to go through the gate of the Anunnaki, which is ultimately all our goal is to go through the gate into that higher realm. She says, listen, you're, you're two thirds divine and one third human. And if you try to go through that gate, two thirds divine and one third human, it's going to be like walking into a blender. You're going to get your feathers ruffled. And so Gilgamesh takes that to heart and realizes that it's very important in his quest to attain a sense of wholeness and holiness or divinity. Wholeness and divinity are symbolized by a circle, and a circle is 360 degrees. So what Inanna is telling Gilgamesh and all of us, archetypically speaking, is that when we enter into our flesh and blood state, we're two thirds divine and one third human, where we're about 240 out of 360. And our quest in the earth life is to move that needle from 240 up to full divinity. Part of the reason why we incarnate on the earth plane perhaps is for, for entertainment, to work out karma, to have feelings. You know, when we're in our light body phase in these high celestial realms, we don't experience the emotions and, and certainly the physical senses like we do on earth. And that is a major reason for the soul to incarnate. But the main reason, according to the high mystical traditions that we choose to incarnate, is because we're agents of our source, our creator, we're agents of love and light. And our mission in incarnating on earth is to spread compassion, love and light, and also to help the souls that are trapped here to return to their original source. But as we incarnate, it's almost as if we've got one arm tied behind our back. We don't have our soul's full capabilities available to us at all times, but we have the promise of being able to remember or recall those and reinstall them uh, and utilize them during our earth journey. And that is part of the path of ascension. Our quest for wholeness is a, is a recalling or a remembering, a reunion with our soul's true capabilities of love, light, compassion, as well as the ability to instantly manifest wishes, to uh, levitate, to do all the superpowers of the, of the ascended beings. At four o'clock, having left the ordinary world behind, there's no turning back. And again, this is about the fourth time I mentioned this, this to us today, that we can't go back to the normal world of January, February 2020, because that world never was normal to begin with. We want to instead persevere on our journey and learn how we can transform what we have now into what it is that we actually do want. On Earth, 
The soul, the hero soul must overcome challenges, travels, tests that are, are travels and tests thrown her way on the road of soul trials. And that's what earth really is. It's the path of souls. It's the, the soul trials. Allies begin to appear, fellow souls, fellow wanderers, fellow questers. All of us are gathered in this webinar today as fellow souls, wanderers, and questers. We're all putting a mindset together that we seek to polish up our souls to become closer to 360 than we, than we were before this webinar started. The soul awakens to its predicament at this phase. It realizes it's trapped in matter. Its powers are diminished. This is what I spoke of a moment ago. Campbell viewed these challenges as the food of the soul. Opportunities to find deeper powers within ourselves comes when life seems most challenging, says Campbell. And I know it sounds like a Hallmark card, but you know that is the gift of our present moment. It is compelling us to be like the bear. You know, the bear might have found honey on the low-lying branches, but now it's got to go higher up on the tree and it's got to go further out on the branches to find that honey. And that's kind of us at this moment. We're all kind of suddenly had the rug pulled out from under us in many ways. Our livelihoods have been challenged. Our families have been separated. And we're like the bear up there having saying, hey, what happened to the honey? Well, it's still there. And now we've got to overcome the challenges and get out there on those far limbs and, and scoop up that honey. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Neil with Portal to Ascension, and I just wanted to take a moment really quick and show you the Portal to Ascension platform. The presentation or the documentary that you just watched was one of our many productions that I've done over the years, created over well over a thousand uh, workshops, events, conferences, retreats, webinars, and this is how our website works. If you want to go ahead and receive not only access to this presentation, uh, but hundreds of other presentations that we have available for you right now for free. You can go to our website, you enter your name right here, you email right here, click sign up. Pretty soon we're going to be launching a new website, but the, the procedure is pretty much the same. You know, your name, email, sign up. Once you do that, you're going to get an email with your username and a temporary password. You then click log in. Once you log in, you're going to see the whole entire back end laid out with all the webinars and presentations for you. Not only can you start typing by speaker name, topic, category, whatever you want, even letter, but you can scroll down this list here and sort by category. And I'm not going to read these off to you, but you can take a look. We have a lot of different topics. You for disclosure, true world history, spiritual development, science, sacred geometry, and so much more. And then you can also search by speaker, which we have here alphabetically, or you can just browse the whole entire thing here and take a look at all these presentations. You are able to, if you can take a look up the top corner here, you're able to add to your watch list to watch these back anytime you want. So you can add to your watch list, it'll be put there. When you come back into the platform, you can continue watching where you left off. There's a documentaries tab, there's an interviews tab, and this is how the individual event page will look. So right now you can go to the website, portaltoascension.org, put in your name and email, sign up, you'll get access to what you just watched, and there's so much more footage. There's free footage being added weekly. So really, this is a one-stop shop for consciousness. And there's always new valid content for you that is relevant for the times that we're currently in, where we're not only dissecting and delving deep into the ancient past, but also creating information that will empower us for the future to come. And here is an example of one of the event pages. This one's on Billy Carson, Quantum Macabre Manifestation. You can view it right there. Description, speaker image. That would also go to his bio and then also suggested webinars that you can tune into as well. And then of course, please do leave a comment and leave us feedback. So there you go, guys, that's our back end, and that's how portal to Ascension works. Go ahead, go to the website right now, portal to Ascension.org. It's your name, email, sign up, take a look at the site. Let us know what you think.